Okay, so I'm used to Bill Maher saying stupid stuff when it comes to race, and this just continues. Um, so this is the, the, the ridiculous stuff uh, this clearly aggrieved white man said on Friday. Democrats lose elections. When Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi put on Kenta cloth, I don't think it earned them one vote for their powerful emotional ties to Ghana. <laughs> Here in California, we're now segregating kidnapping. Really, California doesn't just have Amber Alerts for missing children. We have Ebony Alerts for black children and Feather Alerts for Native American kids. What is that? We look for them by listening on the ground? <laughs> Look, even if you like identity politics, this kind of thing is antiquated. From 2010 to 2020, the number of people identifying as multiracial in America went up 276%. One in five newlyweds now are in an interracial marriage, and that number goes up to 100% in ads for Subaru. <laughs> You couldn't do a remake of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner today because almost 100% of Americans approve of interracial marriage, especially with rich in-laws. <laughs> and 95% of white women would leave their husband to marry Idris Elba. <laughs> Idris Elba, who says, as humans, we are obsessed with race, and that obsession can really hinder people's aspirations. Actress Raven Simone agrees. She told Oprah, I'm tired of being labeled. I'm not an African American. I'm an American. She... <laughs> she says, I don't know what country in Africa I'm from. My roots are in Louisiana. <laughs> And you don't have to agree with that. But it's a point of view a lot of people have. It should be respected. Morgan Freeman says the way to finish off racism is, stop talking about it. I'm going to stop calling you a white man, and I'm going to ask you to stop calling me a black man. There's even a movement now to ban racial questions on the census, and many of its leaders are people of color, like Professor Sheena Mason, who says, to undo racism, we have to undo our belief in race. The liberal group MoveOn.org formed in 1998 to urge Republicans to move on from the Clinton impeachment. Today's Democrats should move on from identity politics. It's not working. It's not working for them or for us. Democrats are hemorrhaging the very voters they think they're pandering to. The Financial Times writes... Democrats are going backwards faster with voters of color than any other demographic and suggests the reason is that a less racially divided America is an America where people vote more based on their beliefs than their identity. Exactly. Far left liberals are living in an old paradigm. Americans don't fit into neat little boxes anymore. Who has the number one country song right now? Beyonce. Lil Nas X won a country music award, and he's black and gay. <laughs> and a brand ambassador for the waspiest purse in America, Coach. <laughs> the biggest new star in country is Jelly Roll, who was a drug dealer, then a prisoner, then a rapper, and then a face-tatted country music star. Not to mention a giant middle finger to the idea of staying in your own lane. No. In America now, you're allowed to be many things all at once. And that's a good thing, even when it's really stupid. <laughs> Look, we're all jelly roll now. We're sloppy, complicated, and contradictory. Two-thirds of Republican voters support weed legalization. And 40... Yeah. And 41% of Democrats own or live with someone who owns a gun. Miss Marvel is Pakistani, and the winner of the last two NBA dunk contests is white. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
The new Captain America is black, and Spider-Man is black and Puerto Rican, just like AI George Washington. <laughs> Latinos make up half of the Border Patrol, and the name of the coolest black dude on the planet is Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> Ru RuPaul has a ranch in Wyoming that does fracking. <laughs> really? And has a fortified compound with a bunker to die for. Somehow, the leader of the village people was straight. <laughs> really? He just went to the YMCA to work out. <laughs> and the leader of the Proud Boys isn't an old white guy. He's Enrique Torrio, an Afri Afro-Cuban. He burns crosses on his own lawn. <laughs> Caitlyn Jenner is a pro-Trump trans woman who supports a ban on trans athletes competing in women's sports. And there's even an LGBTQ organization called Gays for Trump. And why wouldn't there be gays love drag queens? <laughs> Our black president was half white and our black vice president is half Asian, and Tiger Woods is... Oh, we don't even have the time. <laughs> My point is... <laughs> Look, you're still building your politics around slicing and dicing people into these fixed categories. Democrats need to get the memo that you can't win elections anymore by automatically assuming you're going to get every voter who's not these guys. <laughs> the more you obsess over identity, the more you ignore the bread and butter issues that win and lose elections. The real issue is class, not race. And the real gap is the diploma divide. And the real future of the party and maybe democracy depends on Democrats figuring that out. Well, now that we've finished airing that piece of shit, Here's the deal that uh, Bill Maher wants to talk about. So he wants to talk about there being the diploma divide. Okay, Bill, do me a favor. Why don't you just have the same conversation that we had about the $13 billion that HBCUs did not get that clearly went to white land-grant institutions? Oh, you and I want to talk about a diploma divide? Oh, by all means, Bill, let's talk about the reality of race in this country when you've got white conservatives right now trying to run a voucher scam in Texas, in Tennessee, in Kentucky, and other states to pull money out of public schools to send that money to largely white suburban communities and say, screw the people who are people of color in these public schools. Oh, you wanted to mock, oh, we now have an ebony alert. Go to my iPad. That was legislation that was sponsored by then California State Senator uh, Stephen Bradford. Here's what white man Bill Maher does not want to own up to in the press release when it was signed into law September 28, 2023. According to the Black and Missing Foundation, 38% of children reported missing in the United States are black. The U.S. population is 14%. Black women and girls are at increased risk of being harmed and trafficked. A recent report on human trafficking incidents across the country found that 40% of sex trafficking victims were identified as black women. Hmm, do you know why there's an ebony alert, Bill Maher? Because, see, you're a white man, so if your mama or your sister or your cousin came up missing, it's a good bet it's going to be covered by national media. Oh, my goodness, when a white woman comes up missing, oh, we send federal authorities, state authorities, local authorities to find that white woman. The New York Post, the New York Times, television and radio are all a going, man, find Find that white woman, yet when black women come up missing, black people have to protest, yell, and scream to make it happen. There's a reason why, Bill, we have this segment 
on this show. See, Bill, you don't care about Aaron Hope, who has been missing from his South Bend, Indiana home since January 22nd. He's 16 years old, 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighs 140 pounds with black hair and brown eyes. Anybody with information regarding Aaron Hope should call the South Bend Police Department at 574-235-9201. 574-235-9201. See, we do that every single day, a bill. You know why? Because white media does it. It does it. I can guarantee you, Bill Maher, you can name off the top of your head at least five prominent white women who came up missing where their story was plastered all around the country. Bill, can you name me one black woman? One black woman? I mean, you have an affinity for black women, so I would think you could name one black woman who's been missing. Since you care about black women, probably only in the bedroom. See, here's the reality. You are a white man, Bill Maher, and you yourself are the epitome of identity politics. Yes, you. First of all, anybody who knows politics knows all politics is about is identity politics. NASCAR dads, they ain't black. Soccer moms, they ain't black. We know the game. And for Bill Maher, clearly somebody who has no sense of knowledge. To think that identity politics only is on Democratic side means you've been asleep for the past 60 years. What, what the hell do you think the Southern strategy was all about? What do you think Trump's initial speech coming down the escalator was all about? What do you think the attack on CRT and DEI and the affirmative action bill is all about? See, Bill, since you want to talk about how, oh, no, it's the bread and butter issue. Okay, well, then tell me why 2% of all venture capital goes to black people. 2%. Please tell me, Bill, why the federal government spends some $600 billion on contracts and 1.67% goes to black people. Is it that we don't own businesses? Is that we are not smart? Please, by all means, Bill, since you care about black women, only in the bedroom, please share with us in your infinite wisdom why black women, maternal health, is more dire than that of white women, even, Bill, when you are a rich black woman like Serena Williams. Oh, but then the white savior, Bill Maher, wants to parade the exceptional Negro. Look at this. Beyonce, the black woman, has a number one song, country charts in America. But I noticed, Bill, how you skipped over the racism that Beyonce encountered in 2016 when she performed at the Country Music Awards. I noticed how you gave no nuance in Beyonce's statement when she alluded to what took place at the Country Music Awards. Hmm. Were your researchers asleep on that part? Oh, then you want to mention, oh, this person. That per See, this is what white men like Bill Maher do. This is what they do. Look at Thurgood Marshall. Oh, so when Thurgood Marshall became the first black on the Supreme Court, did that somehow eliminate all racism in the criminal justice system? Please tell that to all the black men that have been, that have been released from prison since Thurgood Marshall was on the Supreme Court who were sentenced to death row for crimes they did not commit, Bill. Oh, I'm sorry. See, in your world, that's identity politics. We shouldn't talk about those things, those little pesky things. 
And so you sat here and you went, oh, on and on and oh, oh, my goodness, uh, um, uh, Kamala Harris, she's, you said, oh, she's half black and she's half Asian. So are you somehow suggesting that she has not had to endure a significant level of racist attacks? Oh, you mentioned, oh, we had a half president, half black, half white. Oh, oh, so we don't want to talk about the double standard that existed between him and Trump. Super white man, half black, half white man. Mm -hmm. See, you don't want to deal with that. See, guys like you, Bill Maher, you're the white liberals I talked about in my book, White Fear. How the browning of America is making white folks lose their minds. It's white men like you. See, it's white men like you, Bill, who are also threatened. It's white men like you, Bill Maher, who don't want to see your whiteness, who don't want to see your white maleness. See, the reality, Bill, is that when you assign identity politics to only Democrats, you act as if that we are just this wonderful America and things are great. When, Bill, we can go down the line. Health, education, economics, real estate, Oh, you, 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 didn't, you didn't think that racism was there? Oh, see, I guess you missed when I did Patrick Bet David's podcast when I had to jack him up uh, and I had to break down in the racism in census tracts and appraisals. Oh, oh, I, I'm sorry. Is, is that identity politics? I mean, are, are we supposed to talk about that, Bill Maher? Are, are, are we supposed to talk about uh, the reality of how black people in this country are getting screwed out of wealth as a result of home appraisals? Oh, I'm sorry, Bill. You call that identity politics, right? So you mean to tell me, Bill, that we shouldn't focus on this here? Should we? Hmm. Widespread racial bias found in home appraisals. Researchers found evidence of a persistent practice that gives higher values to homes when the occupants are white and devalue them if the owners are people of color. Hmm. See, when I did Patrick Bet Davis' podcast, he said, oh, well, th th those are isolated. Th those are I Really? Go back. Huh. Right here. The appraisals, which were compiled between 2013 and 2021, present evidence of a persistent widespread practice in the home appraisal industry to give higher values to homes where the occupants are white and devalue them if the owners are people of color. Analyzing the millions of appraisals by using census tracts as a proxy for neighborhoods and comparing communities with nearly identical housing stock, two researchers found that the results showed a clear correlation. The higher the proportion of white residents in each community, the higher the appraised value of individual homes. Hmm. The researchers restricted their study to neighborhoods in metropolitan areas with at least 500,000 people and at least 50,000 residents of color and ensured that not only did the houses in the same compared communities look similar, but residents were of the same socioeconomic status and amenities like parks, grocery stores, and local services such as banks and post offices were on par. But see, in Bill Maher's white man world, that's identity politics. So what then happens, Bill, when black people get screwed out of their home appraisal? That means that you sell your house for $100,000, $300,000 dollars less. That means black people now don't have an additional one hundred, two hundred, dollars or three hundred thousand dollars to invest, to save, to pass on to their children, to pay for their college education, to do other things, to give to various communities. So is that identity politics? Is that it? 
Is it identity politics, Bill, to showcase how black people literally encounter racism? Bill, I know you love smoking weed, but are you aware that racism initially helped black people when it came to the opioid crisis? Oh, Bill, you weren't aware of that, huh? I guess your largely white research team on your HBO show couldn't find this out. Yeah, white doctors, Bill Barr, white man, would often give black people Tylenol because they thought black people were trying, were on heroin, so therefore they would not prescribe black people opioids. So when the opioid crisis hit, it was just wiping out white people, Bill, because they were taking OxyContin and those powerful opioids. So when it started, I literally said, wow, this is the first instance in the history of America where racism helped black people. Few of us were dying from opioid, uh, uh, opioid epidemic because the racist white doctors would not prescribe us the pills. But Bill, you call that identity politics. So Bill, here's the deal. October will mark the 10th anniversary when I last appeared on your show. You remember that, right? When I killed it, but then when the show's over, you told the producers that I was on social media, which was bullshit, because I was actually checking my notes, because we were discussing Bill Cosby, and on the way to the show, I had called a rape survivor, Shalai Abrams, and I had called Dr. Jeffrey Gardier to get their perspective on why women come with their story 20 years later, and I knew Bill Cosby was coming up and I wanted to properly quote them. And that night, Bill, I pulled up my notes when your producer told me at the rap party and I showed them the notes. And I walked up to you and told you, I hear you have a problem thinking I was on social media. And I showed you the notes. Have been invited back since. But you got your podcast where y'all sit there and when you smoke and drink, First of all, you could drink in front of me, but I don't inhale weed. Bill, I'll be happy to come do your show anytime. I'll be happy to invite you right here. And if you want to have a real conversation about identity politics and the reality of America, bring it. Because all that bullshit you said Friday night was exactly that. Did not pass the smell test. Because you, Bill Maher, are literally in denial. As a white man in America, you are in denial about the reality of what we face in this country every single day. But you get to sit in your largely white enclave on HBO, and you do know what I'm talking about, and sit here and pontificate in a snarky, arrogant ass way, when the facts simply do not line up. So take your pick, Bill. Pick the lane. Education, health, economics. And you and I could have a real conversation about the reality of race, of class, in any of those areas. But you know what? You punked out that night 10 years ago. Because when I showed you I wasn't on social media and I showed you the notes, you probably punk out on this conversation. Because that's what a lot of arrogant white liberal men do. So yeah, you deserve to be called out for the bullshit that you showed on Friday night. I'm closing the show out. It's where my panel can comment. So, Derek, you first. You know, Roland, 
today's news could not have been a better bookend to what you just articulated. Today's news where Donald Trump, his $454 million bond was reduced to $175 million. He's dealing with a hush money case. But then on the other bookend, Roland, uh, we watched the raid of Sean Diddy Combs. We watched folks getting arrested. We watched the, whole, the, the aerial shots, the helicopters and everything. And I'm not trying to rush the judgment on, on Sean, um, uh, Sean Combs, but the bookend is very clear. If, 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 if Bill Mars doesn't understand uh, what you just articulated, I mean, his analysis around identity politics was ignorant. And I'm trying to be very polite on the show. It, it, it clearly demonstrates those with privilege, uh, those who have a, a spirit of, a, of entitlement, right? They, they cannot walk, forget a mile in our shoes, they can't walk one block. And they refuse to look through the United States through the lens of a black person. And so for him to say uh, Democrats, is around this identity politics, but yet you don't want to talk about Trump selling gold-plated sneakers for $400. You don't want to talk about Trump having 91 felonies. No one in the country or United States ever had that number of felonies. No black person, if Barack Obama had one felony, he would have been arrested. And I know people tend to say, Roland, I, I get it. There you go again. Y'all talking about race, but they continue to demonstrate and illustrate why we're so frustrated, because if you're going to talk about these United States, if is United States racist or not, the, the, today's news is the perfect bookend. You watch Trump continue to attack the courts, the judge and everybody in the, in the justice system. But meanwhile, you watch a raid. Diddy did not get an opportunity to negotiate for 18 to 19 months of a person that took classified material. Yep. I mean, classified he, material. He, he, and he, so this is the problem that we have with people with Bill, like Bill Maher. Here's my dear Julian. I would love, it would be awesome to have a non-race conversation. That would be amazing. It would be amazing, absolutely amazing to have an education conversation but you can't talk about HBCUs being cheated out of $13 billion and leave out race. You can't talk about the voucher scam that they're trying to do in Texas and Tennessee and Kentucky and you leave out race. You can't talk about healthcare in America and disparities and you leave out race. You can't talk about economic prosperity in America. Housing, venture capital fund, private equity, stocks and bonds, and you leave out race. White men like Bill Maher would love if y'all could just stop. And then, oh, he quotes, oh, Raven Simone. Raven, he quotes, he quotes Raven Simone. Can we stop? Oh, I'm from Louisiana. No, you're not. <laughs> because guess Roland. what, Raven? My maternal grandparents are from Louisiana. But their parents and grandparents came from somewhere else. Raven, please, go get a map. It was a thing <laughs> called a Louisiana Purchase. So the reality Ooh. is, Louisiana... What even imagine. from here? See, then, he, oh, Morgan Freeman, if, if the race thing will go away, if we can just stop talking about it. <laughs> Let me know how that would work in the home appraisal business, Morgan. Matter of fact, <laughs> I thought that was laughable, Bill, especially considering Morgan lives right there in Mississippi. One of, the, one of the racist states in America.
Then, then he shows, who was the other person he showed? Oh, uh, well, there's one woman said that we could take race off the census. <laughs> okay. Roland, Did, go, go, I, wish you could show, mm. I wish you could show our faces when we were listening to that fool. <laughs> <laughs> because literally about three times like, shut up, fool. Uh, not funny, Bill. Um, yeah, I mean, he tends to be funny. But that that was patronizing. It was ignorant. I will say a couple things. One, Steve Bradford, State Senator Steve Bradford in California, was pressured, actually. I mean, he'd have to be pressured because he's, he's a good dude. But black women's organizations were looking at the fact that we go missing. Nobody gives a block. Nobody. And then... Nobody. And then, and then, Roland. One of the things you 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 were you you didn't say that we should is that when these white girls go missing, half the times they lying. The runaway bride, she just went somewhere. She didn't want to get married, so she ran away. And guess what? <laughs> we would have no problem. There'd be no need for the Amber Alert if black people were included in the Amber Alert. Hello? How about, Hello? See, since Bill want to sit here, see, again, see, now he pissing me off, okay? Well, because well, see, what, Bill, what Bill Marta want to deal with, that little black boy in Louisiana came up missing, and the cops told his mama, oh, he may just be playing at somebody at a friend's house. When the, when, the, when the white woman and the son came, picked that boy up, and later found that boy murdered. But the cops were like, oh, yeah, we're not going to look for him because he's probably out there. They did not take that woman seriously, and her son was found dead. They, they never take the missing a black girl seriously. We're all, we always either ran away, you know, we were involved in something illegal. I mean, but, you know, like I said, let, let, let the least little white girl go missing, and they won't even investigate it. I mean, they'll, I mean, they'll, invest, they'll look for her, but they won't investigate the story. How did the runaway bride get away with it as long as she did? But you know, the, the, in the longest run, Bill Maher is tripping, and we know that he's tripping. And you, as you said, you we can't if if we choose to be myopic, which many white men are, we might be able to have a conversation or two absent race. I guess we would have to talk about food, um, maybe clouds. I'm trying to think about where we have a conversation that does not include race, because race is part of our life. Race is part of um, our very existence. And literally everything, I would I'll tell you a short story about some white people. I came home the other day, so white people standing in my yard, standing in my yard. I said, what are y'all doing in my yard? Oh, we just looking around. WTF, I asked them to leave. White lady told me, can you prove you own this house? <laughs> now, would she have said that? <laughs> I, I said, I have a driver's license with my name on it and this address. I said, I also have a phone in my hand. I'm fit to call the popo. And then I called one of my friends because I don't know. You haven't instructed me in how to take a picture while I'm on the phone. Thus, I called a friend of mine. She said, take a picture. Hurry up. And I couldn't figure it out. But as soon as she said, take a picture, they ran the you-know-what out of my yard. But would you ask a white person, can you prove you own this home? Right. Yeah, it's, 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 it, it's in our very daily interactions. Right. And so, how, so we're not race obsessed. We're not racist. We're racial. <laughs> Wait a minute. We're, Hold up. And we are realist. Exactly. And we'd be GD fools if we denied our own experiences. You but know, also, but also, how to fix this issue in Omicongo. That to me is is the thing here. And again, what. White men like Bill Maher don't want to deal with. They want to live in this space age. Uh, you know what? They want to live in the bottom part of King's I Have a Dream speech. Mm. They, li they live in that world. Oh, little black boy, little black girl holding hands. And, but the rest of us, we live in that part that was the top of the speech. Yeah, that's real talk. I mean, 
their whole conversation about identity politics, everything that Republicans have been doing have been based on identity politics. Look at their transgender ban. Look at the don't say gay bill. Look at, you know, the, the marriage laws. Look at what's happening with women across the country as it relates to who, who has the right to say who can have children and when and what they're doing with, with IVF and everything. That's about against women's identity, right, and their ability to assert themselves. So every single thing that they've been built on has been built on identity politics. And furthermore, if you want to talk about the history of racism, you talk about Obama. Yeah, he's ha he's, he's black, but he's, he's half white and this and that. Are you going to mention that and not mention the one drop rule that said if you had one drop of black blood, you are black no matter what other parentage you had? Like, that's part of the history. That's part of the story. And, la and other also, Roland, he's lying about Democrats have been losing because since 2018, they've been right. winning everything. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, it, it's a, it doesn't make sense with the elections that have been going on. The Democrats, Republicans keep losing because they are the ones trying to hammer down on identity politics. They're the ones trying to keep us divided. And they are the ones playing this grievance. Mar, it sounds just like the guy, that doctor guy from Tennessee that you played earlier, just more of a comedic version. And so he keeps talking about all these individual things relating to racism. And by the way, Raven Simone, go to a Trump rally and say what you just said and see what happens. He keeps talking about this individual, but does not talk about the institutional racism yep. which you laid out when you laid him out. And so every single day, when we talk about the bigger issues, right. Bill Maher looks more and more idiotic and more and more like somebody who has no idea what he's talking about, but it's playing off the politics of grievance, and you laid it out better than anybody could. Uh, I'm going to close with this. Since Bill Maher, since you, uh, if we just focus on class. Okay, Bill. Oh. So, Bill, help me out here, Bill. Bill, I want you to look at this black boy right here. Kawan Bobby Charles. November 3rd, 2020. 15-year-old boy, his friend and his mama, his white friend, 17-year-old Gavin Irvin, and Irvin's mama, Janet, came by his house and picked him up. His family said he was missing. His family Call the cops. The cop said, oh, he had a football game. Mm. Three days later, Bill, this was the discovery in a sugarcane field. He had been beaten and tortured. This is how that boy left home. And Bill, this is how his mama had to bury him. And that white woman wasn't immediately arrested. There were no answers from the mama or from the son. Nothing. And Bill, do you know what that white woman was charged with? Contributing to the delinquency of a minor and failure to report a missing child. Uh -uh. So Bill, you tell me this, how a white woman and her 17-year-old white son could pick up a 15-year-old black boy from his house in New Iberia, Louisiana in 2020, and three days later, that boy is found dead. And nobody to this day has been charged in this boy's murder. You then talk to me then, Bill Maher, about your bullshit attack on identity politics. Oh, I'm also close this since we in Louisiana. There was an election over the weekend, Bill. And a black man named Larry White, Henry Whitehorn, he ran in the general. Well, guess what happened, Bill? The white man he ran against contested the election because Henry won by one vote. They forced a runoff. Well, guess what? 
that brother right there, he won by 5,000 votes. He overcame the BS. And you know what he became? The first black sheriff in Cato Parish. And he's only one of, I think, two black sheriffs out of 63 in the entire state. But hey, Bill Maher believes that we just focus too much on identity politics. Must be nice to live the life of a white, unbothered man, Bill Maher. Fanbase is pioneering a new era of social media and investment. This next generation social app has already raised $10 million and has just opened a new round to invest. For details on how to invest, visit startengine.com slash fanbase or scan the QR code. Another way we're giving you the freedom to be you without limits.